Hey guys, welcome to another Fitness 101. Today we're talking about Y valves, coming to you from the lovely Torpedo 7 Northling store here in Christchurch. Um, my name's Stephen, and alongside Spencer here today. Um, Spence, you want to give us a little bit of info on yourself, man? Yeah, um, kia ora whanau. Uh, my name is Spencer, as Stephen has just mentioned. I've been working with Torpedo 7 for the last three years. Uh, prior to moving to the new Northling store, I was at Number One Fitness where I met Stephen. Uh, prior to all of that as well, I also worked in retail for two years and I was also a personal trainer for four years. Awesome, man. Cool. So a lot of you should know me from back in the previous one we did a couple of weeks back. Um, the fitness nutrition. Um, today we're talking about Y bells. So um, Spencer's going to be doing a bit of a workout session with us uh, towards the end of this um, Q and A, uh, and going through a lot of the routines you can do to get a full body workout. It's a four in one exercising tool that you can use. Um, it's made of a nice rubber, uh, so uh, in comparison to like a dumbbell, where it's maybe more of a metal, rigid. You know, you might get sort of calluses to your hands or might be a bit rough on you. Um, yeah, it's nice and comfortable on your hands. It's got multiple different grip um, options here. So um, you can grip it externally, internally, depending on where you want the weight distributed. And um, yeah, it's gonna sort of cover a, a fair few things. If you're someone that generally, maybe you don't necessarily have the room to have kettlebell, dumbbell, medicine ball, you know, all of those tools, um, then this thing here can cover all of those bases. So. Yeah, definitely something sort of worth adding into your uh, fitness regime. These ones here, they come in a good range of uh, weights there. So it's 4 kg, 6 kg, 8 kg, 10 kg and 12 kg. So it sort of caters to everyone. If you're looking at doing, you know, more of a high rep range resistance workout, and you might go with more of a lighter weight if you're looking to tone, or if you're looking to maybe put on extra, extra size and do a bit lighter weight uh, sort of rep range, um, then you go for a slightly more heavy option. Best thing to do is always start off light. Um, you can always increase the rep range and as you become more comfortable with the weight, then you can start looking at adding more difficult exercises. You can even start looking at different aspects of training, whether it's time under tension, whether it's hypertrophy, strength, or even muscle building, even the lighter weights can serve a higher purpose. So if you're starting off small and you want to start building up size, then I would suggest start a much uh, smaller weight size and start looking at a higher rep range. And as you start progressing in reverse to strength, you will then look at a higher weight and a low rep range to maintain that strength as you progress through with your training. Ideally, because the, the fact that they do come in diff either, yeah, all different weights, but they, they do vary in the size. Um, so ideally you would you want to have an even sort of um, yeah, situation for, where, for when you're doing that press. Um, so that you're not sort of disputing your chest and you know the muscles working differently. So you want to keep it even. Yeah, just as if you were doing push-ups on the floor on your hands. Um, yeah, you want it to be a sort of yeah even surface. The yeah. reason why for that even surface as well is because if it's one higher than the other, what you start to do is start looking at your rotator cuff and your shoulder, and you'll start to yep. put more tension in that area, and you'll start to find out after you do your workout routine that one side's sore than the other, and that's because of that. Um, that's uneven distribution of um, weight and because of the height. So I, I would probably suggest maybe around the small and medium size. Um, you mean you can always increase the rep range for those that you know want to, um, you know, over exhaust those muscle groups a little bit more. Um, so that kind of keeps it versatile for kind of all the clients that you might be training there. Um, anything you want to add, bro, in regards to that? Um, yes. Yeah, so being versatile is good. Um, the, the smaller the weight the better that your actual more movements that you can actually help achieve, whether it's reverse lunges, you know, if you really want to get into CrossFit as well, um, a lighter weight is quite good. So being able to do pistols with a lighter weight is even better. And like Stephen said, you can just add more reps to it with a lighter weight. And you can do far more exercises than if you were to go to a large or extra large trying to do um, a few exercises where it might limit your either your range of motion or even the stress that you're putting on your joints as well. A couple of different sort of options there. Um, you could grip it centrally if you're doing an overhead extension here. So that way the weight's distributed nicely sort of centered. Um, and yeah, alternatively, uh, you may grip it on the sides here if you're doing a double arm tricep extension. So that way, yeah, it's going to be a lot more comfortable for you. 
And if you do it as if you were doing like a tricep rope exercise on a cable machine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So once again, for incline and decline, you'd predominantly have the, your hands position in the middle of the weight to distribute um, fairly. If you had it on the outside, you'll find that a few joints or even um, parts, parts of your body where you start to ache and hurt as you're doing the incline or decline exercises. It really depends on what kind of exercises you are doing. Like if you're doing incline bench, then you obviously you have your hands in the middle, same with the decline as well. Um, but if you're doing any other um, exercises too, but predominantly you'll be hands will be in the middle of the white belt. Back issues, okay so the last thing you want to do is do a lot of any kind of exercise bending over, okay any ex any ex an external force onto the back is going to make things really difficult so if you are using the white belt you know and you do have back issues um, then you want to start looking at um, other ways or other bits of equipment you can use as well. Um, traditionally a lot of people don't do this but you can actually lie on the floor and do your presses as well. So instead of being on a bench where you have to rotate off, you can actually just be on the floor and you just do presses from there. However, if you are trying to get up because you still have that chronic back pain, then traditionally you can look at doing either exercises like bicep curls, anything, even lunges, even walks as well. Even having a walk, having one while about one side and just traveling forward is actually good for your core as well, especially for your obliques because you're trying to keep your balance nice and straight. Yeah, absolutely. And worth checking in with a with a trainer, you know, even if it's a, you know going along to see a physio or doctor, just to check in with them before getting into anything where you're lifting stuff, mm -hmm. definitely uh, something worth doing beforehand, just to see exactly you know, what you're sort of dealing with and and uh, yeah, what to use. As you can see behind us here, we have a stand here valued about four nine nine price range, um, but it's perfect for storing you know, all your sizes on there. We've got a few excess on the floor here, but however, it will hold. The whole range there for you so definitely something worth having uh, if you're wanting to get them off the floor i mean demonstration wise um good thing about these having the handle multiple sides here when you are doing alternative swings um you can bring it up here grab here and then come back down so that way there it's keeping it nice and consistent and um there's no having to sort of toss it in the air to to re-grip it because it's yeah, nice and easy for you so yeah perfect yeah the um the grips aren't terribly massive, so as you can see here, bringing it up, cool. So you can see it here, um, easily, yeah, to wrap your hand around. Um, yeah, even if you have small hands, yeah, perfect. So not a problem. Uh, a lot smaller than if you have traditional dumbbells at the gym. So yeah, yeah. and even going up to the large, there isn't a significant. Um, increase in terms of width around the actual handles themselves, which means that even if you might, you might be a lot stronger, but if you do have small hands, um, you'll still be able to grip them quite well. If we get into a bit of a the workout routine, um, Spencer gets Spencer here as the wee guinea pig for this. And, uh, <laughs> thanks, gonna, thanks gonna, man, <laughs> no, I appreciate it. So he's going to get a sweat on for us. Um, so we're going to start <laughs> off with, they call them halos, so we'll pass this over to him. Hopefully it's not too heavy. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and get into it. Yeah. So um, first of all, you're basically above the head and uh, rotating around. So this is going to be targeting his shoulders. It's also going to be working his core a little bit, and uh, and also through your sort of laterals, uh, lats as well. So yeah, it's a good thing to sort of start with. I mean, prior to getting into any workout, you do want to get a bit of a warm up. Um, in the mix as well so make sure that your whatever muscle groups you're training with the y bell prior make sure that you're getting your stretches in there as well before you do so so you know just 10 15 minutes just a wee warm up um yeah it's going to sort of help reduce any chance of injuries and things so cool um that's cool so that's what we do for starters there um also next next one we'll be going into um uh, squats so just to work through your uh quads hamstrings um, glutes as well, so as you can see Spencer gripping two-handed at the top there, and uh, yeah, the way he goes, keeps the weight nice and centralised, that's cool, and um, yeah, by using a product like this, instead of having a bar on your back, and you know, not everyone has, is comfortable with having something up on their traps, so um, yeah, it's a lot more comfortable for everybody, and uh, yeah, so that's cool. So generally with these, you want to do about 10 to 12 reps, uh, three sets, just a general kind of workout um, split. And um, yeah, so from there, we'll move on into um, bicep curls. 
So it's obviously going to be working your arms. And um, so there's lots of options that you can do for that one there, um, whether it's your traditional bicep curl. So you see, see it's gripping it centrally. And um, yep, you know, good range there. You can also switch around to like a hammer curl as well. So straight up and down, so it's a nice easy transition. And then another one, for those of you that tuned in last uh, nutrition workout where you mentioned about forearm exercises, um, the other thing you can do here is rotate round with this and that way you can go straight into targeting your forearms and back to your biceps, so it's nice and easy transitions. Um, cool, um, next exercise we'll jump into there, we'll go into the, uh, the rows, so you can uh, bend over rows, gripping it again, um, you can either go single arm, so this is gripping it on one side here, and um, as you can see yeah, the weight's kind of hanging off the, into the front here, so yeah, keeping that tension. Yep, nice for, for Spencer. Um, if you're finding it um, sort of hard to balance, you can put your arm on a bench or whatnot you've got at home, and that way you're keeping yourself balanced as well, keep your back straight. Cool. Um, another option is to grab both sides, and uh, that way, yep, so legs together, and then pulling it straight in, so that way um, you get a good squeeze in your lats there, and um, yeah, so it's gonna target, target that back nicely. Um, moving right along there, so if we go into, um, the uh, lunge press. So basically, Spencer's gonna step back with one leg, and um, again, this is gonna be targeting his hamstrings, quads, um, and uh, so you're bringing it up, and straight up into a shoulder press. Yep, so this is gonna be hitting his shoulders, as well as his legs, um, but you're grabbing it centrally, centrally again, it's gonna keep that nice and centralized um, weight, so the balance is nice. And um, yeah, so he'll do a few sets of that, and then you would switch legs. Um, switch arms, yep, and then back onto the other side, so, so that's another good one there. Um, cool. And then so now we uh, move on to a wide belt swing. Um, so this is as I sort of demonstrated before, um, so bringing it up and then grabbing the next um, rung there, so rotating it around, yep. And that's going to be basically a good thing about this exercise is it's giving you almost a full body uh, work out there, so it's hitting your back, your shoulders, your quads, your hamstrings. Um, you can even go up on his tiptoes as he goes. Um, if you go side on there, mate, you can see yeah, if you go up onto your tiptoes there, it's going to be hitting his calf muscles as well. So, um, yeah, great sort of full body exercise. And this is one that you may even want to start with just to warm everything up. So you might use a lighter wide bell for that, uh, that sort of thing there. Cool. Um, Awesome man, so we jump into you're doing tricep extensions. Um, so a few options there, and where you're gripping it there too, so as I kind of demonstrated earlier as well. Um, so grabbing it centrally, yep, over the head there. As you can see, Spencer's sort of bracing it side there just to keep him nice and self a bit more balanced. And um, yeah, basically get a good stretch through your tricep muscles. Um, so you've got yeah, three different muscles in you. Obviously, that's why it's called tri, it means three. So yeah, this is one way of hitting, hitting the tricep. You can also do a tricep kickback, um, so sort of stepping forward a little bit, yep, keeping that sort of back straight um, there, and um, keeping your elbow kind of locked to your side, yep, and as you can see there, yeah, hits the tricep nicely on that angle as well. So um, also, uh, so moving on, if we go into the Russian twists, so this is one Spencer's going to be on the ground for, um, so yeah, this one's going to be hitting your core, as you can sort of see here. And he's great, it's just like a medicine ball, so, but it's a lot more comfortable to grip because you've got the handles. So it takes that focus mainly so you can concentrate completely on your core. And um, yeah, so again, 10 to 12 reps, three sets of each of these exercises. And um, yeah, you're gonna feel it. It's gonna give you a great full body workout and it's using literally one product, so fantastic. Yeah. So a big shout out to everyone who's tuned in tonight. Yeah, thanks very uh, much. Thank you for your questions. Even for those who have stumped off, thank you very much. Um, it's very well appreciated. Um, and thank you for the opportunity for us to present this from the new store in Northlink and Christchurch. Yep. And to all yous out there, we will see you out there, yep. whether it's in the gym, out in the hills, on the mountains, or on the surf.